telling how rainbows are made and why they go away, said Carl Sandburg, the famous American poet. Friends, lend your ears to the splendid English recitations by Diara, Omar Faris, Nida Zubaida, Elvina Nicholas, and Shiva Priyavi. Hello everyone. Today, I'm here with the poem Palanquin Bearers by Sarojini Naidu. Sarojini Naidu was born in 1897 in Hyderabad. She is popularly called the Nightingale of India. She was actively involved in the Indian Freedom Movement and also pursued an active literary career. Her first volume of poetry, The Golden Threshold, appeared in 1905 and in 1914 she was elected a Fellow of Royal Society of Literature. Lightly, or oh lightly, we bear her along. She swears like a flower in the wind of our song. She skims like a bird on the foam of a stream. She floats like a love from the lips of a dream. Gaily, oh gaily, we glide and we sing. We bear her along like a pearl on a stream. Softly, oh softly, we bear her along. She hangs like a star in the dew of our song. She springs like a beam on the brow of the tide. She falls like a tear from the eyes of a bride. Lightly, oh lightly, we glide and we sing. We bear her along like a pearl on a string. Good morning. Today I am going to recite the poem, Oh Captain, My Captain, by the famous American poet Walt Whitman. In this elegy, about the death of a captain at his dangerous voyage. The poet refers to the assassination of the former American president Abraham Lincoln by the end of civil war. Meanwhile, portraying his patriotism, veneration and pain. O Captain, My Captain by Walt Whitman. O Captain, my captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack. The prize we sought is won. The port is near, the bells I hear, the people all exulting. While follow I the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But oh hard, 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 Oh, the bleeding drops of red, where on the deck my captain lies, fallen cold and dead. Oh, captain, my captain, rise up and hear the bells. Rise up, for you the flag is flung. For you the bugle trills. For you bouquets and ribbon reeds. For you the shores are crowding. For you they call the swaying mass. Their eager faces turning. Here, Captain, dear father, this arm beneath your head, it's some dream that's on the deck. You're fallen cold and dead. My captain does not answer, his lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my arm, he has no pulse nor will. The ship has anchored safe and sound, its voyage closed and done. From fearful trip the victor ship comes in its object won. Exult, O shores, and ring, O bells. But I, with a mournful tread, walk the deck, my captain lies, fallen, cold, and dead. Thank you. A very big good afternoon to you all. 
I am Shivapriya B from class 8G. I am in front of you to recite a poem, The Marvelous Travel, written by Joshua Fernandez. Traveling is not mere going somewhere and coming back. It is understanding the world more better. In this poem, Joshua Fernandez beautifully shares his views on travel with us. So let's go to our poem, The Marvelous Travel, written by Joshua Fernandez. I travel with my eyes, watch those silently cry, asking themselves the question why someone left them without saying goodbye. I travel with my thoughts, I travel with my pen to write about children, women and men. I travel with my voice, I travel with my hope that something new would spring into my horoscope. Whether in Asia, America or Europe, there will be always be something interesting to scope. I travel to many different places, mixed with many races. I identify tribal men by their faces and little girls by their laces. I travel without money, so please listen to my tendency. The good, the bad, or even its ugly, every experience is both life journey. For I will always be marveled whenever I traveled. Thank you. Good morning to all. Today, I am here to recite a poem. I am the people, the mom. Written by Carl Sandler. I am the people, the mom, the crowd, the mass. Do you know that all the great work of the world is done to me? I am the working man, the inventor, the maker of the world's food and clothes. I am the audience that witnesses history. The Napoleons come from me and their Lincolns. They die. And then, I sense for us more Napoleons and Lincolns. I am the sea ground. I am a probate that was sent for much flower and terrible stars pass away. I forget. The best of me is sucked down and wasted. I forget. Everything about that comes to me and makes me work and give up what I have and I forget. Sometimes I growl, shake myself and spatter a few red drops from history to remember. Then I forget. When I the people Learn to remember. When I, the people, use the lessons of yesterday's and no longer forget who robbed me last year, who blamed me for a fool and then, there will be no speaker and no the world saying the name the people with any flag of a sneer in his voice or any far off smile of derision. The mob, the crowd, the mass, Alright then. Thank you. Good afternoon everyone. Today I'm here with a poem of William Shakespeare, The Seven Ages of Men. All the world is a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exist and entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. His acts being seven ages. At first, the infant, mewling and puking in nurse arms. Then the whining schoolboy with his satchels and shining morning face, creeping like snail unwillingly to school. Then the lover, sighing like furnace, with a woeful ballad made for his mistress' eyebrow. 
Then a soldier, full of strange oath, and bearded like bard, jealous in honor, sudden and quick in quarrels, seeking the bubble reputation even in cannon's mouth. Then the justice, in fair round belly, with good capon lined, with eyes severe, and beard of formal cut. Full of wise souls and modern instances, and so he plays his part. The sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon, with spectacles on nose and pouch on side. His youthful hose, well saved, a world too wide for his shrunk shank. His big manly voice turning again towards childish trouble. Pipes and whistles in his sound. Last sin of all that ends the strange eventful history is second childishness and mere oblivion. Sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans everything. Thank you.